Thank you very much. I will be brief as well. Uh, as you already heard, uh, we had this <clears throat> meeting this morning with the Prime Minister, um, which um, we considered a successful meeting, a good meeting. It took place in a very open uh, and frank atmosphere. Um, obviously, we <clears throat> stated the relevance of the auto industry for Europe altogether and for UK in particular. There are about 12 million jobs related to the auto industry in Europe. Uh, there are about 700,000 here in the UK. Um, <clears throat> we talked about a number of areas, uh, competitiveness being one, clearly stating that it's the role and the responsibility of the auto industry to make sure that we continue to deliver world-class products uh, which stand up against uh, the global competition um, and at the same time ask for regulation uh, supporting the strength uh, of the European industry based on the strength of their uh, products and technology. Um, this includes, which was another topic, of course, uh, trade issues. We all agreed uh, that we are by definition very much in favor of free trade as we are exporting like 80% uh, of our products uh, outside of their nations they are produced. Um, but at the same time, this cannot be a one-way street in, in any specific um, discussion or negotiation. Uh, so we are uh, asking for level playing fields uh, in these negotiations, uh, which will be held uh, in different countries starting now and others uh, coming probably later. Um, we were talking about uh, CO2 and uh, the significant efforts the auto industry is taking in reducing uh, the CO2 emissions of the industry altogether, be it uh, via, if you want, conventional drive lines, uh, gasoline, diesel engines with uh, significant improvements in efficiency for these vehicles, or be it in uh, gradually more electric of these vehicles through hybrids, plug-in hybrids, range extenders, uh, full battery electric cars or uh, fuel cell cars, um, which are electric cars as well. Um, there was a discussion on uh, the need or at least the opportunity in increasing the R&D uh, support on a European basis uh, for all of these activities. Uh, there are two-digit uh, billions being spent by the auto industry uh, for this paradigm shift um, and we see many other regions uh, of the world uh, where governments are participating in the R&D efforts in a significant way, much more significant than in Europe. So that's one area of uh, potential further improvement. Um, we were talking about standard, standardization in this regard as well, but we as an industry have to take the lead, but uh, we need uh, governments to support us in this um, regard. Uh, we were talking about uh, legislation as well, not just by its content, but by its uh, complexity as well. We are seeing today about 20,000 pages uh, of legislation in Europe for the auto industry, so we de don't need more of that, but um, smarter regulation, more, more efficient, uh, straightforward, um, which can save money for the taxpayer and the industry and lead to better outcome. Uh, as was already mentioned, there was the expression of a strong support for the auto industry uh, by the Prime Minister and the Secretary. Uh, there was a high interest in general and specific information about um, the needs of the industry. Just to mention one example, we we're talking about uh, <coughs> the logic that it doesn't make sense to apply legislation on trucks uh, similar to cars, uh, which could lead to smaller trucks uh, and thereby less efficient trucks because they need more trucks to transport the same payload and thereby in the addition of these vehicles then produce more CO2 rather than less uh, and therefore follow 
uh, a path of tons per kilo kilometer uh, as being the, um, the reference for CO2 emission. And uh, that, for instance, was one specific example uh, which the Prime Minister highlighted and said it would be very good if not only in the, um, in the offices but uh, with the head of states and the secretaries. Uh, these transparencies should exist that they can uh, themselves then work together with the Commission in order to make sure that in the end we have meaningful and reasonable legislation pursuing the same objective, reducing CO2 in a economically viable way. Um, I could go on, but I would like to leave it there. Once again, I think it was very fruitful and constructive discussion, uh, which we all very much appreciated having the opportunity to do so. Uh, and with that, I would uh, like and we all would like to take your questions.